there's been a lot of excitement and probably the drug farthest along is RMC6236. There was data presented at the triple meeting, the EORTC, AARC meeting last year, and then followed up um, at AACR, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, in a different meeting with their data. And it's a very fascinating drug. <clears throat> uh, it works by binding cyclophilin and it's a pan KRAS inhibitor. Initially, there are some thoughts, what if you bind every KRAS, are we just gonna cause massive toxicity? And thankfully we have not, but it's a very active drug in pan KRAS. Because of the advent of G12C drugs, G12C was not studied as well, but they're really focusing on multiple tumor types with any KRAS mutation. Most of those KRAS mutations are limiting to KRAS G12. There's a little bit of anecdotal data that it works in Q61, but really focusing on the KRAS G12 cohort minus C, which is a lot of pancreatic cancer. I know we're here today to talk a little bit about lung, but it's a lot of pancreatic cancer and a lot of lung, but some lung cancer as well. And it's been pretty promising. Uh, sadly, in pancreatic cancer, any activity is good because we know beyond first line, the combinations do not work that well, but moving them up, uh, but they do have activity there and it's being very, very well studied. So we're really excited because if you look at the response rates, they're currently in the 20 to 30 to 40% range, depending on the line of therapy in a very heavily pre-treated population. Uh, and it offers some novel therapeutics there. There's also some KRAS G12D inhibitors. We haven't seen the data, but there's several out there. There's a degrader, ASP3082, uh, direct KRAS G12 inhibitors, uh, MRTX1133 and RMC9805, as well as a few others making it down the development path. So a lot of different options for our patients right now uh, in this huge unmet need.